Apple just announced their new liquid glass effect that they're shipping into every single device of theirs. But in Figma, there's not a quick and easy way to do this. So what I'm going to show you is exactly how to recreate as closely as possible Apple's liquid glass effect in Figma step by step. But I'm also going to explain the reasoning behind everything we do and every setting we tweak so that you can take your own liquid glass effects and make them meet the needs of your particular designs. The Figma file that I'm working in is linked below. So go ahead, duplicate that, open it up and follow along step by step. By the way, my name is Eric Kennedy. I've taught thousands of designers via my online courses at Learn UI Design. Link there is below. And with that being said, let's dive right in. All right, so to create one of these liquid glass buttons, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a rectangle and we're just gonna give it a black fill for now. Now, the first effect we're going to apply is the new texture effect here, which warps the edges of the shape. So you'll see if I increase the size, you can see kind of some of the warping here. And let me just explain these properties really quick because you're going to use them to modify your liquid glass effect. The size modifies basically the size of the distortions. You know, if the size is really large, like 50 or something, you're going to see much smoother distortions. Now, with this, you can hardly see it, but that's because the radius is very low. So the radius is how far do the distortions vary from the actual edge of the shape. So how far does it vary from the rectangle? A high radius means it can vary up to 20 pixels, I believe, on either side. And size 50 just refers sort of to the... Um, the size of the distortions, right? So just think, you know, if it's one, you're gonna see noise and ripples. If it's 100, you're gonna see much more smoother curves. So what I wanna do is now I'm gonna set the fill opacity to something like 50%. And you'll notice that right now, that if behaves exactly like you would expect it to. The background is not warped at all or anything, it's just a little bit blacker. Now, I'm gonna add in a second effect here and I'm gonna go to background blur. And the second I add any background blur, what happens is the background gets warped in the same way that the edges of the shape are warped. And so you can see if I go to zero for the blur amount, in other words, no blur, there's absolutely no background warping. But the second I do even a single pixel of blur, I see the same amount of background warping. Now I'd recommend using something like four pixels, maybe on up to 10 as kind of a starter value for your glass. And it just depends on how high contrast and visually kind of poppy the background is. If the background's coming through too much, you want a higher blur. If the background is very subtle and changes very slowly, not very high contrast, you can have much less blur. So I do something like four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, maybe 10. This has a lot of high contrast edges. So I'm gonna do something more on the greater side. Now you can also do a progressive blur where say you start with zero blur at the top and have a higher blur at the bottom or whatever values you want. I don't really find that that adds to the effect or makes it feel more like glass, but it is an option. So now you have kind of a sense of the glass effect right here. And at this point I'd go and adjust the, the texture a little bit. So I just make sure, hey, does this glass feel like it's smooth enough, right? So maybe a value kind of like 100. And the radius affects how much the warping there is, right? So if it's a very large radius, this is incredibly warped. Like this is not a smooth piece of glass. But you know, I find if you do something like 100 for the size and 25 for the radius, you have enough warping where it's visually interesting. Look at that, ooh, that's cool. But it's not so much that it feels like the glass is just terribly distorted or kind of low quality or something. Again, you can play around with it based on your needs, your background, and the effect you're going for. Okay, so now our challenge is we have this layer with the glass effect and we want to actually apply it to a button so that we could say dynamically change the text and have the button fill in with the glass effect. What I'm going to do is press command X to cut the glass layer and then I'm going to go command V and paste it into my button. Of course, this puts it in an auto layout, which I don't want. I actually want it to be absolutely positioned. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my texture and I'm going to see ah the radius is 25. I'm going to put it so that it has a Y value and an X value of negative 25 so that any distortions that go inwards as much as the radius will not be visible on the button itself. So you'll see this in just a sec. Now it's visible here. The glass is, but there's a couple issues. <laughs> One, um, you can't actually see the text. So if I press open bracket, it drags it to the um, bottom of the auto layout or the top of the layer panel. So now I can see the text instead. 
And also my button has a fill. I'm just gonna completely remove that fill for now. So now there's nothing competing with the glass effect. It's just the glass effect and the text. So this I might call blur or glass or what have you. And then I'm gonna resize it so that, again, whatever I have in this radius value is just the padding on every side of the button. So let's just make sure that's 25 all the way around. And go right here and you can see that it's kind of cutting chunks out of the effect that's because i need to add 25 to my width and 25 to my height as soon as i do that i won't be able to see any chunks cut out now the next issue is if my button were to get much longer and i were to add a whole bunch of text here you see the effect kind of runs out and and the glass ends so what i want to do is actually go to the constraints and i'm going to shift click right so that it's constrained to the left and right side and i'm going to shift click bottom so left plus right top plus bottom now whenever i adjust the contents of the text here, no matter what happens, the glass effect will always cover the full button end to end. At this point, you know, the button doesn't stand out very well. We're gonna add some stuff to make it kind of stand out, but we still have like that frosted glass effect. And so you can just kind of move it around your background and just make sure it's got all the right values and kind of feels correct. And then when you're confident about that, it's time to add some lighting effects to the button itself. So now I have the parent frame of the button selected, I'm going to go to effects and I'm going to add in, well, I'm going to add in a drop shadow, just a normal drop shadow. Typically I might do something like have a Y value of two that sets it slightly below X value of zero that sets the light source directly above and a blur that's, you know, on the order of four times bigger than the Y value, just something nice and soft for the opacity. I'm going to keep it at 25, maybe 35. Generally, the darker the background, the higher the opacity needs to be in order for it to show up. But in this instance, 25 seems totally fine. Now, that's well and good, but the real effect is going to come from kind of the faux outline that we're going to generate by adding two inner shadows. So I'm going to go add an inner shadow right here, and it's actually going to be white. It's not going to be black. So fun tip, just press F, enter, and you have white, and we're going to give it a 90% opacity. I'm going to give it a blur of, let's say, something like one. And now what I want to do is I actually want it to be slightly offset. So if I do, nope, I don't want negative one for the X value. I want one. So if I have one for the X value and one for the Y value, the light source is at a 45 degree angle here. As I decrease the X value towards zero, it changes the angle of the light source. I'm just gonna do 0.5, which makes it a little bit more subtly towards the center. It's not perfectly centered. You can see that this gleam goes farther down on the left-hand side than the right, but it just adds a little bit of interest and um, kind of implies a different light source. I like this inner shadow, so I'm gonna duplicate it and create the second one based on the duplicate effect. So if I click just to the left of this icon here and press Command C, Command V, I get a second inner shadow, and then I can go and just switch the X value to have a negative sign in front of it and the Y value to have a negative sign in front of it. And now I see the same inner shadow on the bottom right-hand side. Now I'm gonna change a little bit here. In particular, I'm going to give it an opacity of 100% rather than 90%. That's going to make it feel a little bit brighter, as you can see. It's kind of subtle, but the, the edge on the bottom is brighter than the edge on the top. And then I wanna really zoom out and be at 100% to kind of judge the full effect. Now, I'm just gonna say that because light sources are so often coming from the sky, it's really unusual for the bottom edge of something to be brighter than the top edge. And that's kind of part of what makes this look interesting. The net effect is since the bottom edge is brighter than the top edge, that's only possible because of the refraction of light that goes on in the glass, and it makes the button feel a little bit more exotic. It's pretty subtle, but it's gonna add just a little bit of oomph and ah to your button. Now at this point, we have a button where you can go and you can dynamically modify the text inside of it. And if you click into your button, you know how to change the properties, the background blur, the texture, to get the right effect that you're looking for. The only other property that I might actually change is the actual fill of the button itself. Right now, it's black at 30% opacity, but if you wanted a white button, you could do something like this. Of course, if the opacity comes too high, white text will not be visible on your button. But if your button ever needs to appear on a white background, then you're gonna want the fill to be a little bit darker so that the text is more legible and it's kind of robust to those greater background color changes. Again, 
take a look at what your button needs to display and what the background is in order to tell exactly how to modify these properties. All right, congrats. Now you've made a liquid glass button and you understand step-by-step -step exactly how they work so that you can modify it and make it your own. If you want to get even better at Figma, check out my Figma tutorial, which is linked below. It's every major feature in the whole dang app covered in an hour, and you build a sample dashboard as you learn. And if you want to become a better designer, I highly recommend checking out Design Hacks. That's my free newsletter full of practical user interface design strategies and frameworks. I send out really quick reads. They will make you a better designer. I guarantee it. Anyhow, any questions on the liquid glass iOS effect in Figma, leave a comment if you have one. I'll be responding. And that's everything. Cheers.